So I looked over my old files on New Year sermons. And an old file had one that had not been used at all, and it said, very good verses, too short. <laughs> but I thought, that might work out in both ways. We have very good verses, and it's too short. But the goal is to draw attention today to uh, three important verses. I think one will be well-known, the other two will not be as well-known, and they both have the idea of the times in it, or the appointed time. Sometimes an author will put a Bible quote at the beginning of a chapter. That's how I found this first verse, uh, 1 Chronicles 12. You can work your way there. Uh, 1 Chronicles 12 is... Uh, kind of obscure and unknown, and I believe it was J.I. Packer, who would be uh, British, but he worked in Canada a lot, and uh, he wrote a book, a devotional book called Knowing God, and I think that's where I first saw First Chronicles 12.32, and it refers about time, and it gives historical comment about some people in ancient Israel. Now, uh, finding 1 Chronicles 12.32, I think that the tribe is not important. So I'd like to begin with the word men. Uh, usually in the Bible it means people, unless it specifically says female, but uh, male and female. But 1 Chronicles 12.32, men who understood the times with a knowledge of what Israel should do. Now, let's apply that to now. People who understand the times and know what Christians should be doing. Now, first, we'll think about uh, the context and what this is all about there. And then we'll think about the United States and think about 2022. Uh, do we understand our times? Do we know what to do? In the original context, there had been a split between the followers of Saul and the followers of David. Uh, King Saul had fell on his own sword with the Philistines surrounding him. King Saul was gone. Some of the people wanted uh, one of his surviving sons to be the new king. Others were followers of David. And God had told Samuel that David would be the new king. Should uh, they unite and obey God through Samuel and anoint David the new king, or should they continue, shall we say, fighting over nonsense? Well, they came together and decided to come together and not fight over nonsense and to come together and fight the Philistines or, you know, apply to more our time, to come together and fight God's enemies. Uh, we read verse 32, we'll uh, glance at verse 31 that says they came together to make David king, the last phrase of verse 31. Verse 33, the last phrase, talks about helping the new king with an undivided heart. And verse 38, also with a perfect, and we'd say united heart, to make David king over all Israel. So applied to our time, we'd say uh, don't fight over nonsense with other Christians and uh, fight instead against the Philistines, those who are actually godless, those who actually have uh, false ideas and those who actually have false morals. Uh, do we understand the times and know what to do? Well, we're pretty good about not fighting each other within the church. Also, I won't spend too much time Sunday after Sunday fighting the enemy of the week. 
I've gotten uh, emails from churches where basically the sermon every week is who to attack this week, who to attack that week, who to attack the following week, and usually they're attacking other Christians. Yes, separation is true, but in the Bible it's uh, do not be equally yoked together with unbelievers and uh, come out from among them. And I would say real separation, I mean real division is if a church, and they're out there, will not believe in the deity of Christ or support it, or a church will not believe in the resurrection or require that people believe it, or a church is not pro-life, will say nothing, or our church is not for the sanctity of marriage. I mean, there is a time to oppose. On the other hand, uh, it, we should not oppose other genuine Christians, and uh, we should unite to make sure we are fighting against the real enemies of God. Getting a little bit more complicated now in understanding the times, uh, we are not yet in persecution, but we might say Christians are being hated. Bad words, meanness, so far not yet persecution. I think understanding our times would, uh, in one direction, say God is giving up on some people. So if we try to help some people and it doesn't work, well... We'll never know who, but maybe God has given up on some of them. And uh, we need to keep trying because we don't know who the identity of these people are that God has given up, but we should not feel false guilt. If we try and we try and some people are just too far gone, I don't feel false guilt because... Uh, as in the days being referred to here, some were too far gone. On the other hand, knowing our times is that some people are out there searching. I believe some people have learned recently it isn't very smart to worship the government. And some people out there have learned recently it isn't very smart to worship the self-called experts who are elite on everything. Or to worship our jobs. Some of these things are okay if they are underneath. Okay, view the government as something that God can use underneath, underneath God, okay. View the career as important as something that God can use to exalt himself, yes. As a God, I think more and more people are learning not to worship society not to worship education as a God, not to worship business as a, as a God, not to worship careers. We already know that here, but I think more and more people are uh, unbelievers even are starting to kind of wonder, was it that important? The answer, well, it never was that important. And some people will be looking some, some people will be more depressed. Uh, even hear about that around and on the news. Now, depression is not good. On the other hand, it might lead to a person saying, what is the answer for this? And uh, we should uh, take attention. We should give watch to people that are hurting people that are seeking for answers, people that don't feel any encouragement, we should be watching for them. I think we will, but uh, let's make sure that uh, week by week, if we hear comments of people that are discouraged or comments of people that are looking for answers, that we are ready. We have a knowledge of what to do. I think a lot of Christians have not been. Now, maybe it will change. But I think a lot of Christians, if I may use an old phrase, they're fiddling while Rome burns. A lot of Christians go to church for social reasons only, to make connections only, to make more friends only, maybe even to make more business contacts only 
But uh, that is their purpose for going to church in the first place, and that is their purpose for picking a church. I think it's very, very common. If you'll let me repeat a story I heard from a missionary, he uh, came from North Africa where the Christians were being persecuted by the Muslims. And he went to California and he made a speech about persecution of Christians by Muslims. And he waited until the prayer time, and the prayers were about, I would like you to pray for the renovations of my house. I didn't hear about this on the internet. This person actually called here. And uh, he's friends with my cousin from the Detroit area. But he'd been a missionary among the Muslims, and he knew about our church from my cousin up there. He said he could not believe He could not believe the lack of attention on evangelism and the lack of attention on ministry and that uh, when he went to this church and told about all the horrible things happening, the prayer requests were about things, acquisitions. Uh, That is not our church, but we got off on that. I do think it's too many places where as far as understanding the times and knowing what to do, they haven't even thought about what to do, let alone understanding the times. And the times are there will be more people that are hopeless and there will be more people that are seeking. I think it will go in both directions. But if we hear that people are seeking and we hear that people are miserable and we hear that people have need, Let us make sure that uh, we are ready and that uh, we are ready to do something about it individually and as a church. I have several times been to conventions for decades, if I start using all the illustrations, where the banner on the stage is reaching the world for Jesus. I remember them from the 70s reaching the world for Jesus. And uh, while I do not know what goes on in private, I don't think enough have been. I think it's the kind of thing where there's uh, lots of talk about it. Do we understand the times? Do we know what to do? And are we watching for people that have needs? The next verse is about a like It's a little bit different. It has the word uh, action in it. Please turn to Daniel chapter 11. First Chronicles 12, 32, understanding the times and knowing what to do. Now we're at Daniel 11, and we're going to read verse 32, but again, I'd like to start it in the middle of the verse, and we'll come back and talk about the original intention in a second, but Daniel 11, the last part of verse 32, the people who know their God will display strength and do something The people who know their God will display strength and take action. These words were future to Daniel. Some interpret them as Antiochus Epiphanes. We'll say more about him in a moment. He was between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, Some take it only as the end time Antichrist. Uh, Most that I know take it as both. You know, you have like Old Testament types that show a picture of the future. And Antiochus Epiphanes was a past to us, far past, but Antichrist will be the future. And uh, at first, may not remember Antiochus Epiphanes, but we will remember what he did. He is the reason that the Jews still have a Hanukkah, that they still have a dedication ceremony. And uh, verse 28 talks about uh, set his heart against the Holy Covenant. 
Verse 29, at appointed time. Verse 31, desecrate the sanctuary or the temple. Do away with the sacrifices. After Alexander the Great, kingdom split up. There were four generals. One of them was in Syria, and eventually it goes down to this Antiochus Epiphanes. He went down to Israel. He took over the whole country. He took over Jerusalem and the temple. He took over all the small towns. He put up a statue of Zeus in the temple. He sacrificed a pig on the altar. He ordered all the worship services to stop. He was going to get rid of Judaism. He went out to a small town. He told a priest out there that he had to sacrifice to the gods, to the idols. The priest got his knife out and killed the courier that gave that message from the king. His name was Matthias. He had five adult sons. They are known as the Maccabees. And the five adult sons all started fighting. And they took the whole country back. They took the small towns back. They took the temple back. Wondering what to do with the temple, they knew from the Old Testament that there were a lot of eight-day holidays. So they tore down the altar on which a pig had been sacrificed and tore Zeus out of there. And they thought there would be eight days of purity and eight days of lights on the menorah. That's where Hanukkah comes from. Eight days of lights. There is likely a reference to him here in Daniel 11. It was future to Daniel's day. But it's talking about someone who desecrates the temple, someone who stops the sacrifice. And then it says in verse 32, the people who know their God will do something and take action about it. That is the important line applied to us. The people who know their God will take some action. I think a lot of times Christians now are too inactive I get in trouble, but I think many Christians talk and talk and talk about doing something, not even so much in conversations, but in events. Talk about doing something, but very repeatedly, often, don't do anything, just stand there, if I may reverse the phrase. Um, there are limits on what can be done, but every open door ought to be charged through. Try, take action. Again, back to the, some of the services uh, in the past I've been to where they're going to reach the world for Jesus. I always think of one of them was in the same room where our church had an exhibit the year before. And no one else was there. Just us. And unsaved people. In the same room, in the same room, the exact same convention center, in the same room, the year after, they're going to reach the world for Jesus. It made me think about, well, talk, 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 talk some more. Uh, talk a lot about it, but weren't here last year. The people who know their God will take some action. And uh, I do like that about our church. At least we try. And we try in the neighborhood, and we try regionally, and we try nationally, and we try worldwide, and we try. At least it takes action. So... Uh, I have in here Moody. Now, not the Moody of the Bible College, but Moody the evangelist. Someone said, I don't like the way you do evangelism. He said, I like the way I do it better than the way you don't. <laughs> so one could say, I don't, I don't like the way you're doing it, but at least he was trying to do something. 
So those two verses, uh, I think they've got great lines in them. I don't know whether we remember them from the past, but uh, 1 Chronicles 12, 32, understanding the times with a knowledge of what to do. Daniel eleven thirty two: those that know their God will display strength and take action. The next verse, I think we probably already know, but it's a good one to think of for New Year's, uh, Esther 414. So please turn there. Esther 414 will be better known, particularly the last phrase, for such a time as this. And uh, This is Mordecai talking to Esther. For if you remain silent this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, and you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not attained royalty for such a time as this. Mordecai was Esther's cousin. Uh, He must have been older because when she was an orphan, he raised her. Over time, evil Haman had uh, tricked the Persian emperor into making a law to kill all the Jews on a certain day. And uh, Mordecai is telling Esther, she better go in and talk with the emperor about this. She objected, saying that unless the emperor had called and summoned somebody, that person would be in danger of just showing up. I will say again that in all these stories, the conditions were worse than the United States. I believe we're going down. But all these conditions were terrible. The Philistines in the first story. Antiochus Epiphanes in the second story. Death penalty for all Jews in the third story. I mean, these times that we're actually reading about were all worse than what we have now. Uh, And yet I do think we're going downward. We're trending downward. We're not as bad as these places in the Bible or these times in the Bible, but we're trending downward. For such a time as this, does that apply only to Esther? Well, you already know, I think not. I think there's a destiny for everybody here. And I think there's a destiny for all the Christians you know. I think there's a destiny for this church, and I think there's a destiny for the other churches. And sometimes they're different. Sometimes it's just best not to spend a whole lot of time uh, thinking about what other people are doing or what other churches are doing. They just have different destinies. And we have our own destiny. And there are people that we can help that other people can't help. And there are people that this church can help that other people can't help. Now the main purpose of this New Year's uh, sermon has been to uh, point out the overlooked verses. They all have the word time in them or in the context. 1 Chronicles 12, 32, men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. Well, let's understand our times. It's not as bad as it can be. It is getting worse. And there are people out there that are hopeless and there are people out there that are seeking for hope. We need to be ready to watch for them and look for them. Daniel 11.32, the people who know their God will display strength and take action. Sometimes just do something. I am reminding of the critic that says we don't have proper permission to do this. Uh Huh? I thought God said to do what we're doing. What do you mean? We don't have proper permission to do that. Time to at least try. Take some action. And Esther 4.14, I believe very, very much as a church and as individuals for such a time as this. And uh, God would use somebody else if Esther did nothing, but he had a plan for her. 
And his plan was like plan A for such a time as this. Well, uh, very good. Let's uh, think about these three texts. The first two are very unusual. And uh, we'll ask the musicians to come before communion.